was suggested to me in the comments of one of my previous videos that uh, I try to not, uh, not sound too intentional in whispering commentary. I'm going to try to uh, speak as naturally as I can still whisper volume, uh, because personally I don't think you would enjoy my actual voice very much, um, and I know different people have different triggers, so I think I will be sticking to whispers, at least for this game. side-scrolling Metroid games have always changed endings based on both completion time and um, the percentage of items and expansions you've collected as of the game's end. Um, the Metroid Prime games for the GameCube and the Wii uh, because they are, um, because they require more system power to run, and thus longer booting times between areas, um, disregarded the completion time criteria. Instead, um, only basing it on item percentage. This game, I don't believe, takes into account the amount of um, items in your inventory, uh, particularly because, not this way, particularly because you are not able to expansions that you find, for example, I believe you can only, I believe I can not carry any more energy tanks than I have now, even though there are other energy tanks to be found on the planet.
if my uh, cursor keeps popping up on screen. As you can see, it took far less time getting out of warfare than it took getting in. Okay, we're back in Britain Star now. As we head into Turian, which is the name of Mother Brain's fortress, uh, we will need to recollect the ice beam as the Metroids that we will encounter in there are only susceptible initially to cold-based weaponry. Fortunately, there is an ice beam nearby in this region. efficient and powerful than the other weapons in the game. Fortunately, by the time we get to Super Metroid, the third game in the series, we will have access to the beam stacking that I mentioned in a previous video. Speed and the wave beam will be combined. There you see how fast the wave beam was able to take care of those guys. Once we get the ice beam again, just through here, we'll be back to uh, square two, as it were. In a way, I suppose beam stacking does already exist in this game, as even though we have the ice beam, we've retained the long beam functionality. If you consider the long beam a weapon in its own right, I don't, I don't really. I think of it more as a uh, It's like the high jump upgrade that we got. Um, I did also mention earlier that there are a number of exploitable glitches in this game, um, and that I didn't necessarily know how to do. I suppose that's true if you exclude the tactics I used to defeat both Kraid and Ridley. Um, however, the glitches to which I was referring in particular were um, had to do with uh, going through the hatchways between rooms. The hatchways will close on their own if not accessed, if opened but not uh, accessed for a certain amount of time. And if you, I believe if you time going 
pull through just right. I don't know why I'm going this way. Oh wait, no, I know that. I just wanted to see if I can collect the energy tank that's hidden here. See if I will be able to hold on to it or I will need one of those shriek bats. Or screes. I think they're called screes in this game, but in Metroid Prime they're called shriek bats. Visiting this place, we went to this in the first video. Eventually, I hope to do a similar playthrough of Metroid Zero Mission, which, as I said in a different video, is the Game Boy Advance remake of this game. Alright, we can see now that those statues of Craig and Ridley are flashing or blinking. If we shoot them, it will unlock the drawbridge into Turian, where we will ride this elevator into the depths of the planet. I said Metroids are highly susceptible to cold-based weaponry. Once frozen, they are rendered vulnerable to concussive blasts from Samus's missile launcher. 
structure. It's good that the Metroids drop higher quality energy and missile units. I mean, for obvious reasons. But the final battle with the Mother Brain may require us to go back once or twice and uh, farm for some replenishing items. Unfortunately, this area, despite being the final, um, the final zone, is comparatively easy uh, when you look at the other zones. Alright, here we are in the final chamber. We must destroy these force fields. They look to me like a um, stasis tube or some other device. I'm not sure exactly what they're supposed to be. In Super Metroid, you come back to this area in a moment of nostalgia. And you come to this chamber specifically, and when you walk through these columns, pillars, you see glass fragments left behind, which me to believe that they're glass conduits of some sort. Enemies shoot at you from all directions in this zone. Their sources are indestructible, unfortunately. I believe after this too be at Mother Brain. No, I was wrong. One more. There she is, just past this. sakes. I know you don't want to see me spend time farming. Mother Brain, as you can see, is stationary. However, she has a bevy of defenses. In Metroid Zero Mission, uh, she has a beam weapon that she can actually fire herself at you. Successfully destroyed Mother Brain. And now we must escape Planet Zebus, or at least Durian, before it explodes as a fail safe. Although, I'm not sure what that would accomplish for the space pirates, seeing as Mother Brain has already been destroyed. I suppose. 
suppose it's to prevent unwanted invaders from reacquiring their stolen treasures. I'll be very, very disappointed with myself if I fall. Except, here we go. Mission success. Great, you've fulfilled your mission. It will revive peace in space, but it may be invaded by the other Metroid. Pray for a true peace in space. Pray, people. All right, what do we have here? Excellent. Much to my surprise, we see Samus in her swimsuit. Yeah. <laughs>